Here are the stock shocks that I will be modifying today. I will be making two modifications to it. I'm going to add a suspension preload and also add some thicker grease to improve the dampening. Welcome to Big Sound Hobbies. In my previous B17 Betty upgrade series, I extended the battery wire and made a JST connector using the stock battery wires, making it easier to connect and disconnect the battery and allow the use of other better but cheaper batteries. In today's video, I continue the upgrade series by focusing on the shocks. As you probably know, there are few shock options out there for the SX24, but in truth, the options are not that much better in performance than a modified stock shocks. They do look awesome though, but I'd rather save my money for parts that really help to improve the overall performance of the Betty. Here are the stock shocks that I will be modifying today. I will be making two modifications to it. I'm going to add a suspension preload and also add some thicker grease to improve the dampening and turn the stock shock into this. Adding roughly three millimeters of preload and you can see the springs are a little bit more compressed than this. The shock body length is roughly the same. Um, the difference is very minimal, but it will have improved dampening as well. Here are the parts and the tools that you will need. You will need the stock shocks, a 0 0.05 hex driver, four A006 O-ring, and a green slime or thicker grease. So let's get started. Although I have the shocks already removed, you want to remove the shocks using the 0.05 hex driver. The shock is held by two pivot balls screws. You can pop them out, but I prefer to loosen up the screws using the hex driver. Once you have the shocks removed, then you can start to work on the shocks. Start by removing the bottom part of the shock first. Push up on the spring while holding onto the shot shaft. Turn the bottom piece towards you until you have it loose. Remove the spring and remove the shock cap. On the shock body, there is a plastic retainer. We'll be flipping this to add a bit of preload. So remove it by moving it down. Now we will be reassembling the shock. We'll add a O-ring to the shock body to add a bit more preload. I've seen others use zip ties or even 3D printed part, but the O-ring seems to work well. So I'm going to use one O-ring per shock, but if you want to add a bit more preload, then you can add more O-rings to it. Then install the plastic retainer, flipped, so the small side goes in first. Now add a bit of green slime and then put the shock cap back on. Insert the spring. While holding down the spring, install the bottom of the shock.
You now have added suspension preload and improved the dampening by using the green slime, which should make the shock less bouncy. And now go repeat on the other shocks. The next step is definitely optional, but I wanted to show you to those that were thinking about it. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut off the fake reservoir. It's not functional and I like the simpler look without it. So I'm going to use a flush cutter and use a sand to send it down. Once you cut the four corners, you can actually twist it off and use a sander. Just for a file to just file it. There it is, much cleaner look. Here are the modified stock shocks. One thing, I'll be mounting the shocks upside down. I do this typically on a 110 scale rigs to help with the CG, but at this small scale the difference is very small if any at best. But I find that having the shocks upside down helps with with the keeping the crease in the shock body. Also to add a bit of forward slant to the rear shocks, I removed the body mounts and switched that over, which gives a nice angle for the rear shocks. For my next upgrade, I'm finally going to focus on getting to 6040 weight distribution. So make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching Big Sun Hobbies.